Hey there guys, in this video you are going to be learning how to deal with the most common end games of all and the most hardest end games of all, Rook and Pawn end games. Uh, Rook and Pawn end games are sometimes really hard to deal with and sometimes really easy and in today's video I'm going to show you all all about this topic so make your, sure you leave a like comment down below share and subscribe to the channel because that would be tremendous support to me and it encourages to me to make more chess videos so let's get started Alright, so in this position, what would you have to do? Now, we are white and we want this pawn to get here, promote, but our king can't move because if we move here, that's illegal because this rook is watching this g file and the king is watching the the two escape squares on the e-file too. So what to do? Well, what we have to do is do king to, uh, I mean rook to d2 check. We have to check the black king and that's our only option. And it would be very silly if the black king moved here because then he's just doing our job for us. The king goes here and there's no more check because the black king blocks and really white is just winning here. Black is going to lose either by skew or either by checkmate or either by resignation. You name it, but black is definitely going to lose. So back in this position, black should, can do something like king to c7. And then we do, and then we do king to e7. And now there's a problem. There is like a slight problem. Um, this rook just checks us and we cannot hide from this big bad rook that's stopping us from promoting. So that's not really a good idea. Alright, so king to c7, rook to d4 is the winning move. And because, because of the threat of this, we have to do something clever. And it's called building a bridge. So what we do here instead is move the rook to d4 and... Um, we just win and a bridge is basically uh, a distance between a rook and the king to stop the rook from to stop the opponent's rook from giving checks and making a barrier all right rook to g2 there's nothing black can do like so he just has to make a waiting move now king to e7 all right we're starting to build our bridge now rook to d2 check King f6, rook to f2 check. Black has no option but to just check us. King to e6 check. King to e6, rook e2 check. King to f5, rook f2 check. And we build our bridge. Our bridge is complete uh, once we trade off rooks. This black king cannot get to that pawn, and thus we win. We just win. Okay. And back in this position, we just do this. We just do this. Like, like we just do that. All right, let's move on to our next example. Now, here's our next example. And this example is a pretty hard example, and it's called the Fildor's position, named after the famous chess player, uh, Fildor. And 
And if your first instinct is to check, well, my friend, you are doomed. After Black creates a meaning threat, this king's gonna be pushed out of here. This pawn's cut. This little piggy or pawn is coming down. White is basically dead. Like, basically just literally dead. So what to do in in this position? Once we go back, what do we do in this position? Well, we have to come up with another clever idea. And what we do, and what makes this move so hard to find, is because it's not a pin, it's not a check, or it's not a capture. Wait, who am I kidding? You cannot capture anything in this position. Anyways, the correct move is rook to a3, sealing, just literally sealing off this black king from moving. And now it's... It's a draw if black plays correctly, and if it's a win if black does not play correctly. So, it's either a draw or a win for you, but this position is qu quite hard. Um, and now, what happens after this is, like, black will eventually get frustrated that he's going to move his pawn, so then he can move this king here because the pawn is the shelter but now it's basically even we just head back and the the black pawn gives shelter from here but not from here so we just do rook to f8 check and black really cannot just like um yeah, black cannot do anything about this. We're just going to keep checking and checking and checking and checking. And if you haven't seen my videos on ways to draw or my, in my beginner series, I've put, posted the link in the description down below. And it's in the eye icon above, so you can click and watch that. But there's a way you can draw. Just let 50 moves happen just doing this check 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 and it will be automatically a draw oh and if you are in a tournament with this position you have to be notating um uh you have to be notating um if you if if uh like for proof because the tournament director just won't believe you and your player might not even know about this rule so you'll have to be notating and that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, please make sure to subscribe, like, comment, and, and also turn on the notification bell. I don't want you missing out on any of my fabulous chess content. So, bye bye for now, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!